Welcome back, everybody, to the SIG Podcast Recruits Draftcast. Folks, we're in mid-March, and you know what that means. A month from now, it's the U18 tournament starting up. So we're going to get into that a little bit, maybe some predictions about Team Canada, which players could make the team, all of that stuff we'll dig into. As always, we're going to get to Rocco's Riser of the Week a little bit later. We have our Prospect of the Week, and for our Habs fans, we can't let you down. We got our Habs Prospect of the Week ready to go. So let's get started. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, producer Shane here, joined by my fantastic co-host, Ro- Grant, Grant McCag, Rocco Zappia. Gentlemen, how are we today? Doing good. How are you doing? Can't you complain. should alter that, complain. you know, uh, that, uh, you know, with the first overall pick, the uh, Chicago Blackhawks are pleased to select and then put in David Reinbacher with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and, but no, it, it would just be Carey Price stumbling to say his name. That That's what it would be. David, yeah. <laughs> da- David. Anyways, we're forgetting about that one. Uh, poor Kerry. Oh, well, that's he meant true. Well. Right? He meant well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, yeah. D- David is now w- with the Laval Rocket. We're not going to get into that too much because he hasn't even played a game yet. But anyways, he's out of Cloton. Habs fans, rejoice. Okay, it's that that nightmare is over. <laughs> we can move on to better things now. Uh, and I think I'm pretty sure he's going to be pretty happy about that too. Actually, get some wins for once. Um, so guys, hopefully April 25th is the start date for the U18s tournament. It's playing in Finland this year, hosted in, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Espoo and Vanta in Finland. I'm sure I butchered that, but doesn't matter. We're here to talk hockey. Uh, (laughs) so last year we know the U S they won the gold Ryan Leonard overtime thriller, right? Uh, Sweden came in second with Canada finishing third this year. Grant, you think Canada has a much better shot, and you actually prepared us a potential lineup depending on where their junior teams are situated in the the rankings. So I'll let you uh, take over. Okay. Uh, Yeah, well, I mean, the last two years, I was having a look. uh, They had uh, four guys that were picked in in the first round of the draft combined. Uh, this year there could be like 10 plus guys on the team that, uh, that are first round picks this year alone. Mm-hmm. Last two years, it was four altogether. So, uh, just the loads, more talent, potential talent this year. Now these are the, when it says Canada, U uh, 18 possibilities, these guys, uh, you know, there's a decent chance. Every one of these players is on a team that's ranked, uh, fifth or lower. Uh, in their conference for the playoffs. And it's it's taking place a little later this year. So the first two round, the players from the first two rounds of the CHL playoffs are going to be available, which they hadn't been the last two or three years, you know, COVID and all the different reasons. They were getting, they picked most of the players, you know, just from non-playoff teams. Well, this year there's going to be, they're going to be able to wait and uh, get guys from as late as after the end of the second round. So that makes a lot more players available, right? So these are all guys that, I mean, if you're a fifth-ranked team in your conference, odds are, first of all, you probably lose in the first round, but if you don't, you're going to play the top-ranked team likely in your conference, and the odds are that you're going to lose, right? So all of these guys are likely going to be available. Um when Canada's take, making their picks. And, I mean, there's obvious players like Catton, Aginla, right? Uh, um, Luchenko. Um, I mean, all those guys could be top 20 picks. Um, Michael Haig from um, Chicago, who we'll be talking about a little later, he's a, you know, he's a really good possibility. Chicago's not very good this year, so he'll likely be available. 
writer Richie, who was uh, very good in the summer. Uh, Marcus uh, from Lethbridge. Um, you know, Boisvert is another guy from the uh, USHL that may or may not, uh, team may or may not make it. Um, Green Tree, obviously, you know, probably a top 15 pick. Windsor, so uh, good chance there. And then, there, you know, there's uh, Malcolm Spence, Roger McQueen, and uh, our two guys that played in the summer and were really good, you know, um, excellent, actually. And they're the two underage guys that I see having a good chance of being picked again. Last year and the year before, there were five or six uh, underage guys. And because there's so much draft-eligible talent available for this year's team, I really don't think that there's going to be more than, you know, two or maybe three. Um, but McQueen and Spence, for sure, if their teams are eliminated, are going to be there. And also on the second list, there's another guy that we'll bring up. But uh, at forward especially, like you look at that group, it can be just uh, <laughs> like compared uh, – U.S. isn't going to be as strong this year. Sweden, uh, I mean, I can't see another team competing with Canada if they uh, if they send this, you know, anything close to this this squad. Mm -hmm. Like, there's guys that are going to be second round picks that may not even make the team this year. Yeah. It's just incredibly deep and high quality. Like, you know, the defense is going to be and and goal aren't necessarily great but that uh up front man the uh the forward uh the forward talent goes really deep that uh could be available for this uh for this year's team like i mean guys like massey and patterson are long shots and geez they you know they might get drafted in the second round or certainly early in the third so uh you you look at that group um there's a lot of guys that played in in the summer, like I put Frank Morelli and Cristoforo on there because they played at the Helenka. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Morelli had a, like a top four role. So even though he's not a probably going in the top three rounds of the NHL draft, uh, because of that, because of his past with Hockey Canada, they like to bring back guys that been there, done that, you know, played well for them in the past. So he'll, he'll be a good possibility for getting picked if ottawa you know doesn't make it past the second round uh a lot of these guys typically they pick the team after the first round because they want to have a bit of you know that they're going to play some games before and 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 stuff like that so a lot of the guys picked will be either didn't make the playoffs or got eliminated in the first round and then they'll leave a few spots open for guys they get eliminated at the end of the second round. So for that reason alone, there might be some guys that you'd think, oh, well, they should probably be on the team, but there'll only be so many spots available uh, after, you know, at the end of the second round uh, of the CHL playoffs. So um, goal is the one question mark. Again, it seems to be a common theme with uh, Canadian teams recently, but, I don't uh, – Carter George is a good junior goalie, and certainly mm -hmm. if he makes the uh, – if he gets invited there, he'll probably be one of the better goalies at, at the tournament. So uh, um, that that right there, Spencer Gill's another guy, right? Uh, there's a few teams that are five sixths, and they might end up fourth or whatever, <clears throat> you know, before the playoffs because there's so, – the play, the the playoff races are so tight, but even if you are a fourth ranked team, again, second round, you're likely playing the top seed unless there's real big upsets and you're got, you're probably gone after the second round. So all of these guys, there's a decent bet that they'll be available when the team's being picked. Uh, and when there's, you know, when they're adding guys later and they all are uh, good prospects. So, um, what do you think of that, uh, that group, uh, Rocco? Yeah. I mean, if we're, if we're just doing the, the qualifier with the, you know, the fifth ranked teams and below, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing not like 
about the forwards for sure. Like you mentioned, they've got they've got every really really every dimension that you would want um, from a forward group at at a tournament like this. I mean, you you got three really three good scoring lines there, and, and a solid big big fourth line if you want it. Um, the defense the defense doesn't the defense to me is lacking a star. Um, there's no star. I don't know on that on that decor, but they're but it's deep and it's solid. Um, and there's some bigger players there too, so you like that. And those guys can move the puck all well enough to get them up to the forward. And, and guys like guys like Muse and Cristoforo, even though maybe I don't love them as much for NHL projections as junior players in a tournament like this, they probably they probably do stand out and look and look quite good there. So hopefully those two can maybe carry some of the offensive load. And then the other guys can can just be just be big and solid, and, and that that's fine. The forwards are good enough. That's a, the skaters there are, are really really solid. Goaltending, like you said, it's always seems to be a question mark for Canada lately. But as much as it has as it's been a question mark coming into a lot of tournaments, it seems to be that there's tournaments where where guys guys end up playing playing well enough that it doesn't hurt the team's chances to win. And that's ultimately, I think, what you're what you're looking for. And I think Carter George would, would give you that at this tournament. He, like Grant said, he'd be one of the one of the better goalies at at the U18 tournament, anyways. And and you know, NHL potential. That's a different conversation, I think, for this tournament. He's more than more than capable to uh, more than capable to, to carry the load for them. Um, if that's if that ends up being the way that it shakes out, but that would be that would be the one area. And again, the, the defense you'd like to have. I mean, I'm sure they would love, and we'll see a couple names on the next list. I'm sure Hockey Canada is hoping for one or one maybe big upset, so they can get a a, a bigger name defenseman in there to be a, a true number one. But other than that, there's not much to dislike. I yeah. think they have as good a chance as anyone. Mm-hmm. Imagine having a fourth line, checking line like with uh, you know Josephson uh, Wetch. And uh, Spence, or you know, McQueen, yeah. or something like Baudouin, like holy jeez, yeah. you know, like you say, there's all they've got. Uh, the potential of that group there is, uh, um, you know, some really good two way guys, some size, some grit, uh, some some offense. There's just a little bit of everything in that group, and if uh, if that's the, the the group that they get to select from. Uh, not hard to come up with twelve names from that I, four group. I I think Luchenko and Green Tree would be a fun pair to play together. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, well yeah, higher up though, like not. No, no, on, not on your second line. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying below, but that'd be you know you pair oh, up. Yeah. Patton and, and again, I think makes a pretty natural tandem, and I think Luchenko and Green Tree would would as well. And you wow. sure. <laughs> Fill out around that, and you're, you're doing okay. Josephson and Bowdoin would probably pair fairly well together on a checking line as well. So there's some yeah. good, there's some good, and, I, and I'm a, I'm a fan of that. I like I like kind of tandeming guys and then rotating the best fit sort of thing for them rather than having set groups of three. But um, that's a different that's a different topic. There's some it'd be a fun team to watch. I think better than better than last year's, I believe. Definitely oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, last year's had had Celebrini, right? But uh, this year, I think. I mean, we can. Are we are we ready for the long shots list? Sure. Do we want to. Oh, but I just I just want to say it one one yeah. time while we had the, had that up. We're finally we're fa- we're finally calling Cat the number one center, so everyone can. Be <laughs> Everybody in the comments, take it back. Pat, take it back. Cotton can be Canada's number one center, so there it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think we can all agree on that one. So let's look at some long shots. Uh, obviously, Celebrini headlines this list, right? Obviously, it's unlikely, unlikely that he makes the team that uh, BU gets bounced, but anything is possible, right? And if he if he if they do get bounced, then <laughs> that's a welcome addition if there's anyone, right? Well, I mean, they, they have to make the Frozen Four for him not to be available. It's mm-hmm. I think what's more likely is that he just uh, his agent will say uh, no. You know, uh, thank awesome. you, but no, he's thank you. It. Yeah, he's I mean, he, he's a better possibility to go to the Worlds than he is to go to the U18s. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I mean, Fantilli went to the Worlds, uh, Power went to the Worlds. You know, it seems like the Chicago Steel guys that come up through that system that seems to be they all end up going to the Worlds in their draft year, yeah. which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, and I, I had a NHL scout. When I sent this list, he said Celebrini won't be there, uh, you know. So no, I I know, but you got to put his name there, and then 
explain why, mm -hmm. you know, or, or we'll get the, just like the, why isn't Cat in, in your top 10? We get the, why isn't Salabrini on your list? Well, we're explaining why he is on the list, but don't be expecting him at the U18s. That's why he's under longer shots. Not be, not necessarily because BU will, will be in the final four. I mean, it's a tough go. They'll have to get, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's hard to get to the final four. There's some really good teams yeah. and they're second ranked right now, but they could get bounced uh, first round and we've seen it many times. So, um, Laterno, I got some quick, uh, some inside info on that just before the podcast. Uh, I guess he's on the, he's a long shot. Uh, apparently, you know, they've been in touch with, uh, Hockey Canada and, and keeping in touch, but he's been told that he's in the mix, but that at this point he's on the uh, quote outside looking in. Um, I guess it's because of the lack of competition, right? That, uh, mm. that just, uh, it scares, uh, Hockey Canada to, to bring a kid in to that level of competition. And it's unfortunate because it really is going to, I think, end up hurting his draft stock. The uh, team's not getting to see him play at that level against better teams. Uh, but at the end of the day, and we've said it, you know, you've said it lots of times. I've said it many times. It's not where you're drafted. It's what you do after you're drafted, right? Right. Like he, I have a feeling he may not get picked now till the second round because they're just the teams that, that, St. Andrews College plays against most nights. They're blowing them out 10-1. And, so you let, know. let me chime in there for a minute. So if that's, yeah. if that's a concern now, and I don't know, I don't know anything about the kid. I'm just making up a scenario in my head. But say you're the kid and you want to be, your goal is to be a first rounder, right? You want to be a first rounder. You want to make this UA team. Why the hell are you playing high school hockey? Oh, maybe that, that's not his goal. Yeah, no, and that's and that's what I mean. I don't. That's what I'm saying. I'm making making that scenario, but I mean, if he right. wants to be his agents reaching out to Hockey Canada, seeing if he has a chance to make the team. Obviously, he wants to be included, and and if quality of competition, like I mean, I've, I've watched a few of those high school games. And it's it's almost impossible to scout because of what you said, the quality of competition, like is so is so low. So yeah. I I don't know. I don't I don't I never understood playing in that mm -hmm. kind of Canadian prep school kind of circuit. I don't. I don't really get it, especially if you have a chance to be a, a higher pick. I mean, if you're taking, if your kid is taking the longer route, going through NCAA after. But I mean, yeah. if you're a highly touted guy, I just thinking out loud. I just don't really understand it because it does hurt oh. your chances to get selected to things like this and to get get picked higher up. Not that it matters ten years down the road, but I mean, mm -hmm. still. No, I know, and I mean, we've been scouts have been lamenting it all year, but. The fact is that a, at least one guy from St. Andrews College has been picked the last five or six years in the draft. They have a good system, and these guys are going on and making the NHL, so they're developing decently. Um, I mean, entry-level contract, whether you're a first-round pick, a sixth, seventh-round pick, or not even drafted, you, you make uh, the you know you make the same salary with your entry-level contract, regardless of where you're picked in the draft so at the end of the day it really doesn't matter if you're a first round pick or not it really doesn't no, you know, no it doesn't at all i'm not i'm not saying that it does it's just i don't know it just seems odd that you know if you have the agent trying to get some information on where hockey canada might like them that that might have been a consideration before but i mean there's there's more than there's a million ways to get to the nhl mm -hmm. and every single path is you know well, no, what, no two paths are the of same. course the agent's gonna try to find out whether he's they're, they're interested in having him whether yeah. they want him in the first, you know, yeah, and of course they'd like him to get drafted in the first round, but I mean, they have no control over that. I think what's bothering, I've heard that he's not going to play in the USHL down the stretch here either, which I think he played a couple of games earlier in the year. Yeah. And I think that might bother uh, scouts as much as anything, but the fact Do you have that, any idea why he wh is that a is that a health reason, or are they just they're they're happy with the body of work that he has already, or what? I'm not sure. I just I, I I just heard from a scout today that he's he's likely not gonna. That might be the team making that decision and not him, right? Yeah, I don't know. Sure. I don't know the the ins and outs of it. All I know is that 
you don't expect them to be at the from what i what i was told from well couldn't be a better source than what i was told uh you know so um but let's move on here uh yeah. we can talk about him all day but um obviously lindstrom and basha if medicine hat i mean they they were a first place team early on but since lindstrom got hurt they uh they've really sunk so they may not make it past the mm. second round lindstrom should be back soon i've been hearing like any time now so he'll be back for the playoffs and if medicine hat the east is really tight there's some really good teams in the east so you know guys that we showed on the first list could end up being into the third round and then uh, uh guys like uh lindstrom and bash are available you know mm -hmm. and it's the same with Seneki too and oshawa they're yeah they're in first place but I mean, the fourth place team in their conference, <laughs> you know, is like uh, two points behind or something. So there's no guarantees that they make the uh, the third round of the OHL playoffs either. So Seneki and and Morelli, who you see, you know, obviously Dickinson Morelli would be completely welcome additions to that team. <laughs> They'd yeah. probably be the top pairing, right, to, at uh, for the team if they ended up. Uh, uh, getting eliminated in the playoffs. Lavois is another one. Danford from Oshawa. Uh, Bernier, who's really come on. Baycomo, you know. So the defense, obviously, obviously, if any of those teams or more than one of those teams gets eliminated, those guys are really good bets to uh, all be asked because several of those guys might be the top ones that they have on, you know, on the uh, team. Mm -hmm. So, uh It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, Martone, he he's the third guy that is an underage that that played in the summer that was really good. If Mississauga doesn't make it, him and Luke Misa will be good. You know, uh, Misa is a, a quick, undersized guy, but he, he'd be perfect in that kind of an event if if they need uh, some speed. Um, I mean, eighty point scorer in the OHL be hard to to pass up him but uh you look down the you know that list parasac obviously having just a fantastic year prince george is in first place so they're you know they're probably going to make the third round of the whl playoffs but if they don't parasac will be getting a call for sure mm -hmm. put vilnev on there but yeah after the 15 game suspension for putting the bounty on the player <laughs> Uh, <laughs> don't be, don't be expecting hockey Canada to be giving him a call, even if, uh, he would be a good, good choice on that team. Um, Walton also Sudbury, they're a funny team Sudbury, you know, they're, they've been near the top all year, but typically teams that, you know, uh, win games eight, seven, like they've been doing most of the year, they bomb in the playoffs. Like if you can't. Yeah. If you're not strong defensively, as a rule, you know, when things get tighter, if they can check that top line, Musty, uh, Goyette, and uh, I guess Goyette's on the second line now, but if they can hold Dvorsky and Musty in check, that team's going to be in trouble. So, you know, there's a there's possibility that Sudbury gets eliminated in the first or second round. And then you'd have to look at a kid like Walton because he's a pretty good skater, right? Uh, so... I mean, uh, he's not noted to be real physical, but he's a good skater. And 6'6 six, six kid that can skate and has some skill like him, he might be a consideration for the under-18s because of that. And our boy uh, Goisik there, uh, who uh, somebody's going to be talking about in a little while, maybe a bit of a, you know, one of those late bloomers that might be considered for the... Uh, team if uh you know if some other teams make it uh, to, that aren't expected to vanacker he's a lock i think if uh brantford oh gets yeah eliminated, you know they're, they're in they're in first or second i think though right right but i mean it's tight yeah the east the, the east, east is always tight I mean, you know the top three there, or four there's going to be one of the top four teams that likely loses yeah. in the first two rounds at least one because i mean the fifth place teams almost got the same amount of points as the first. So, you know, 
it's anybody's guess who who comes out of the east uh o'reilly obviously with london will be uh considered boy are uh you know not the hardest guy but maybe in that type of tournament he would excel just like he did at the uh top prospect game same yeah. kind of same kind of event really procession uh you know uh, be a great bottom line guy if if uh north bay gets upset and then gardner and leanders uh maybe the two best goalies um you know in the in the draft class so if saskatoon or mississauga gets eliminated again uh, mississauga is probably the better you know better odds of mississauga not making it but one of those two guys or both will get picked for the team i think if they get eliminated so between you know the two lists there is just so much talent i can't recall uh you know in in the last decade there being this depth of canadian talent that might be available for the u18 so it's very mm -hmm. it's very encouraging impressive and and if anybody's wondering hey where's zane parek he's playing at the mem cup so that's why he's exactly. yeah he's, and me so as well okay anybody yeah that's it so i just want to feel you know yeah uh, and take, Misa, take on that. <laughs> yeah misa played in the summer as well but obviously those two are won't be available because the memorial cup so what did you uh you have Tell something else to add there no Rocco? I, no i i would just say there's probably only one team that hockey i mean the list there is so good it, it honestly doesn't matter almost what teams lose out you're going to be able to put a really good roster together i think um yeah. The one team Hockey Canada might really be cheering against, though, is is London, because I do think Dickinson might be that the one true guy that would be a number one defenseman there. And, and otherwise, you have you have a, a really good – everyone else, they probably could have five or six guys who would be number two or three on most, you know, if you slaughtered them sort of where they where they would fit in. Uh, but Dickinson would be the only one who'd probably be a true number one. Um, so maybe, maybe London stinks out. Probably not because they're London, but – It'd be nice if Dickinson could play, but otherwise, I mean, otherwise, <laughs> put the put the names put the names in a hat and pick them out, and you're going to have a good team. That, like you said, it's very very deep. Yeah, yeah, very encouraging. And, uh, you know, there's guys like Yakum Chuck, obviously, that would be invited, but they're late birthdays, so yeah, they're not eligible. You know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the U18 tournament is starting April 25th, and obviously. We'll be covering it. All right. So you get your news. You get all your anal an analysis right here on this channel. Rocco, it's time. Rocco's riser of the week. Grant, you mentioned his name, Hiroki Goisik. Let's talk about him a little bit. <laughs> Got uh, Hiroki Goisik. I'm gonna call, I've been calling him Joystick. I can't get it right, but it's Goisik. Uh, right wing number 29 for the Kelowna Rockets. Uh, he's again his line mate actually now. Well, he, he is, has been lately. 6'3", 198 pound power forward. He's got 21 goals, 50 points in 66 games. But half of those totals, 11 goals, 25 points came in his last 18 games. So he's mm -hmm. really, really, really come on uh, that, that, that latter third of the season really. He is a rookie in the WHL this year. He actually played Junior A last season for Penticton in the uh, the Wild West BCHL Independent Hockey League. So there was a bit of a slow start and an adjustment period for him. Uh, and I will be honest, I watched Aginla quite a bit earlier in the year, and I, this guy did not stand out to me at at all, almost whatsoever. Um, and I, I was told to take another another look, and that he's really come on, and it's you know it's. He, he really stood out in the couple games that, that I watched anyways. So the other thing with his totals, he's only got two of his goals have come on the power play this year. So he's doing almost all of his damage, at least in the goal scoring department. And there's one there. Um, he's doing it almost all five on five, which I you really like to see because you wonder what would happen if he was given a, a bigger power play role. And he does play a little bit on the power play now, but he, he hasn't obviously for the most part of the year. Now, in terms of strengths here, Size at 6'3", almost 200 pounds, that's obviously, that's obviously a big plus. Grant's going to be happy. I looked at the central scouting database. Those are official heights and weights. 
six two and six quarters, but I'm going to round up and call that okay. So size and strength are, are massive pluses for him, especially at the junior level. Um, he is he is growing into a man's body much quicker than than a lot of guys, so that gives him a big advantage here, um, big time. He has a very very good shot actually as well, which one thing I noticed and I watched some of his well I watch all his his point highlights for the year and he gets the thing off quick and it's it's heavy. And I think that uh, that's a nice that's a nice attribute for him. I'm not saying that he's has you know he doesn't have awesome Matthew shot, but he's, he's got an NHL caliber shot. He's going to be able to bury the puck when uh, when given the opportunity to do so. Really, really like his effort level. He had he was pretty consistent in that department in the games that I watched um, both ways too. Um, so you like you like that. He wasn't just committed uh, offensively. Now that he's scoring points, he still kept. You know, kept attention to detail in the defensive game. There's a couple plays here. He breaks up, has a very good stick. He he dives across to break up a wide open pass one time as well. That's that's quite a nice play. A couple turnovers, so he's committed to doing it at, at both ends. And I think I think he knows he's going to have to um, in order to really progress. So you you like to see that physical play is a plus. Um, not much drives me nuts more than a 200 pound guy who doesn't play like it but he does so you're you're happy to see that he's he's very physical he's hard to handle along the boards i heard a scout say one time 90 percent of the game is basically played within three feet of the boards and this guy is really good within three feet of the boards strong on the puck he defends it well he's good at turning it over down low too he's strong on the cycle uh he drives the net drives the post from below the goal line, jams pucks in front, he puts them in the dirty areas, and he goes to the dirty areas. So that kind of makes me think that the this type of points that he gets seem like they they would they would translate to a pro game. He's not scoring a ton. You know, you're not seeing this guy do the Michigan, I'll put it that way, sort of thing. He's scoring hard work, uh hard work points and that that you like to see with a with a bigger body. That's a nice combination. Now skating is his skating is not going to hurt him. I think it's average. I don't. I don't think it'll hold him back. It's. It's good. It's good enough. He's not the fastest player in the world. Um, I think as he gets older, he'll get a little less tired. He gets a little tired at the end of his shifts, um, where he gets kind of big man, heavy legs, which can happen with with bigger guys. It's not uncommon at all. So I'm not really sure. concerned about it because at the beginning of his shifts, he does have some buzz and he's got a little pep in his step. Average puck skills, good enough, but just just average. Can make a pass, but he's not going to wow you with any sort. He's does not going to look like Kucherov out there, and that's and that's fine. But he wins a lot of battles, cycles a puck well. To me, he's got some middle six upside because he can he can shoot and he can bang around and he can dig and he gets possession of the puck. So a lot of times, maybe a guy like that who's not quite as skilled, you play on your second or third line with some more skilled guys, and, and they can fit in and contribute in that sense. So. A little versatility, but probably projects more as, as a bottom six guy. Um, as of right now, just based on the few games that I've watched from from the last his last few, uh, I'd probably put about a third round grade on him. But I mean, if he keeps scoring at a at a point and a half a game through the playoffs, maybe that you know maybe someone takes him a little bit higher than that. Um, and and conversely, if he, he falls off and drops off, maybe he goes a little bit lower than that. But he's he's comfortably inside the top 100 for me. I like him in the top half of the draft for sure. Um, and yeah, he's it's nice. It's nice. I like seeing guys that that really come on second half, especially when they played in a different league last year. You get that adjustment period of the way. You get the confidence. You get going, and then you really kind of see what they can do when they're given an opportunity because they got to earn their way up their own team first right you're not just handed the opportunity so you spend all season working hard and playing the right way you get rewarded with ice time and, and situational play and he's taking advantage of it so i'm excited to see what he can do in the playoffs and i think the playoff game is going to suit him just fine hmm. yeah. yeah and and especially big guys like that that come on yeah. as the year goes along because he's growing into his body right yep. and uh and presumably his his skating will continue to improve as he as he gets a little stronger uh, those are impressive highlights. I like. I'm glad you picked that game because I saw that game, and then that was, you know, uh, yeah. I told you after uh, I was talking to some scouts, saying, "Hey, this, you know, this guy's really coming on," and and I got some uh, confirmation of that. Told uh, told Rocco to have a look at him and see if he thought that he's he'd be a good uh, guy for a riser, and you know, I got back the text, "Oh, I like this guy." You know? So yeah. it was, uh, yeah. I'm glad you do, and um, we're, we didn't have him in the rankings. 
and we're going to plop them into the solidly into the third round for now, maybe even uh, 70 range. Cause there are some things to like there. And once you get past the top 60, it's, you know, it's, yeah, like I, I would, I would put, I would maybe put him in so, like in the same tier. And I don't care which one you put ahead. Cause I have time for either. I have time for the debate for either guy being ahead right now, but him and Walton would Walton. be kind of the same range, same range yeah. of players for me. Um, where they're a bigger, bigger guy with some ups. And now they bring some, they're not the same player. I'm not trying to say they are, but they're in that same range. Right. Uh, comfortably in the third round sort of thing in the, in the mid seventies is, is where I kind of plopped him in um, after watching, I, I watched his last three games, um, including the one that we featured here. So that's kind of what I got, got away from it. But, but there are some things like wouldn't, wouldn't shock me, wouldn't shock me whatsoever if, if he goes somewhere between 50 and 65 in the, in the end of the second round sort of thing. Well, he's a riser. Good, uh, a good rocker riser there for sure. A lot to like, a lot to like from Hiroki yeah. Go Gosik. Goisik, Goisik, Goisik. I gotta. Anyways, that's that's a learning <laughs> curve there. But uh, Hiroki Goisik from the Kelowna Rockets, Rocco's Riser of the Week. Great pick as always, Grant. It's time for your prospect of the week, and we mentioned him before already. Michael Hage. Let's have a look. Yeah, uh, I believe I said Hague, but um, I, I've heard <laughs> both. I've heard both said Hague and Hage, but I think it's Hague. That's certainly what they were saying in the uh, the broadcast here. So, presumably they know. Um, he's uh, he's with Chicago Steel. Uh, it three straight years or four three out of the last four that a Southern Ontario boy has played uh, has gone the uh, Chicago Steel route. You know, you, you can add him along with Fantilli and uh, and Power. Um, and uh, I mean, he's their leading scorer this year in the last 23 games he's got 20 goals and 20 assists so and moved up to third place in the ushl and scoring so i mean when you look at these highlights the first thing that jumped out to me very first shift was his skating he's a uh, smooth powerful stride um good puck skills good motor uh and a heavy accurate shot with a great release so you like the skill level you like the skating and he's uh He's listed at six six foot one eighty seven by Central, but I have uh, I have a feeling he's a little bigger than that. I think he's at least six foot and a half, probably six one, but he's he's going to be two hundred pounder. Like you, you can you look at the frame there. He's a, he's a big kid, so um, I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's he's come on as the season went along. He's really highly regarded and thought of as a top twenty guy going into the year. But then he started off the the season with just uh, well, when I say just, but when you're highly touted, he had ten points in his first dozen games. But since then, he's at fifty five and thirty six. So you like to see players uh, improving the production wise during the season. Um, the other knock on him early on was that he wasn't competing hard enough away from the puck. Now this is a game against Green Bay, March thirteenth. They won 4-2, and he had two goals and two assists, so hmm. there was one there. Obviously, that impressed me, but his play away from the puck was pretty decent here. There he ran a guy into the boards, and you can tell that he didn't really, you know. Oh, sorry about that, you know. <laughs> he didn't want to fight with the guy or anything, but I don't think he meant it. But he, his, uh, I liked his play away from the puck. He hustled. Here's a good rub out into the boards so he's got a little bit of physical edge to him i think it's it's there for him to be a, a solid two-way center because he he's got decent size and he's a good skater it's just a matter of uh figuring that part out you know i mean w when we're kids you want to score goals right not emphasis on that but as, as time goes along and he gets higher up and uh you know up the food chain here with leagues uh he'll he'll keep improving that I think because it'll be drilled into him um the physical skills are there for him to be a good two-way center um I think in a middle line role that he's got the skill level to be at that uh you know to have that upside at the NHL level so um had him towards the end uh you know the 30 range and uh, earlier on he was uh mid Second, because of his slow start, 
Uh, but n- now I'm hearing uh, there's a very good chance that uh, he could be he could be a uh, top twenty guy. Um, you know, and looking at it here, here's a here's an idea of his release and his shot on this uh, replay. Beautiful yeah. shot there. So uh, I ended it off with a couple of his goals in other games, just to kind of give you a better. That was a nice uh, no look pass that he made there. And again, this the toe dragon shot on that one. NHL level skill. You right here, just ring, and then found the corner. Beautiful goal there. So that gives you an idea of of his skill level, right? And uh, I think everyone's got him in the first round now comfortably. You know, if it's not in the 20s, it's probably in the top 20. So we've moved him up. He's Grant's riser this week, you know. I don't want to steal Rocco's riser uh, thunder. But Grant's grower. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, <laughs> he's heading to Michigan. So they've got a pretty good rep for uh, turning out solid prospects and – and an interesting side note at one of his line mates is Charlie Major. And, you know, those two make sweet music together. You know? hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Michael Hage or Hague. Uh, you get that we, one? We, you get we that need one to get one? him on. Right. Sorry. It's uh, maybe Juliana got it. <laughs> I uh, didn't. That's major scale. It's not. Come on, Shane. Even I got that one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I need more sleep. I'm too tired. Whatever you want to say it. Sorry, uh, I Grant. Expected, I expected. I expected lots. I expected lots of laughter there, but geez, it was like stone face. No, actually, <laughs> I didn't. I, I that was just about the right reaction that I expected, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So, uh, Michael Hage or Hague, prospect of the week, riser of the week, Grant's grower, however you want to call it. <laughs> I don't think we're going to use that anymore. <laughs> oh, let's get rid of that one. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good call. That's a good one call. time only. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grant's a highlight. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. We, he he deserves some praise, and and he just got some. So great stuff there, um, Graco. Thank you for your time, my friend. As always, great insight from you. We'll see you next week. Take care. Right on. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. Come on, smiling. So, yeah, <laughs> he's a little more oh, cheerful we, this week. I told him to, you know, more smiles are young lad. Young You're on lad. camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's it. We're having fun here. We're having fun. Uh, <laughs> we get to talk about hockey, right? Yeah. Like, uh, how, how much more fun do you want to have? But uh, yeah, Habs fans, it's time. Our Habs prospect of the week. Not the first time we mention him, but we both feel as if he's not getting enough praise. And that is Oliver Kapanen. So talk to us about him. Yeah, Oliver Kapanen's here to stay. Oliver Kapanen's on his way. That's uh, oh, I used that uh, I like it. for a caption in one of my stories the other. I didn't know if anybody's Elvis Costello fan, but I didn't get any feedback on it. But I thought that was uh, anyway. Oliver's army, Oliver Kapanen. Every time it that runs through my head whenever I Oliver Kapanen with a song. But I digress. I get on to Oliver Kapanen. I didn't have time to get notes made up for it, so I'm kind of winging it. You could probably tell by that uh, by that opening remark. Um, these are highlights of his second last game. Kalpa uh, had to play in a qualifier to make the uh, league of playoffs. They finished outside of the top six, so they played in the qualifier team, beat them two straight, and uh, Mr. Kapanen had a goal and assist in each game and the game winning goal in both games. So how can you not give the nod to this kid for uh, player of the week? He was, uh, he was exceptional in these games. I got, these are the highlights from that game, but what has always struck me about Kapnan is uh, his two way play is just uh, excellent. And it's one of the reasons why as a 20 year old, He's uh, he plays a top two center role and uh, you know twenty plus minutes a lot of nights on Calpa. Uh, that's rare for a twenty year old, especially at center. Look at this end to end, nice rush. He didn't score, but darn close. But you can see the the improvement in his skating uh, that has come along this year. That was the one knock in his draft year that 
he needed to get stronger stride need to get stronger and it and it has he's uh as far as i'm concerned he's an above average skater in Liga now at, at 20 years of age so that's uh you know uh, that that's great um but you see by these highlights uh he had a lot of chances in this game and he hadn't even got a point at this at this point um in the match later on in the game look at this where he handed the blocker back <laughs> to the, back to his goalie he had the you know he had the wherewithal to notice that the goalie had dropped i'm not sure if it was his glove or his blocker but he he picked it up and handed it to him and then tried to block the shot at the same time which i thought was just it just shows you how smart he is and, and heads up as a young player you know but you can tell by all these highlights it's uh good defensive plays and offensive plays i just love his positioning he he finds there there's the goal that was the winning goal um you know he finds the the scoring spots on the ice he he stays in the middle for the most part very rarely does he get caught out of position but he's also very strong on the forecheck like centers don't typically be the first guy in but he often is and he's got the speed and the you know the will to get back and back check and there's the other point that he got so last two goals he got points on they ended up winning now here are the two points that he had in the second game there's the goal um and then this play here is the uh is the other one where he ends up getting the yeah ends up getting it he, he goes to the right places he's very smart so uh you know especially considering his age for him to be uh, one of the better players, I think, one of the better centers in uh, in Liga at 20 years of age, and he doesn't turn 21 till June or July, it just uh, gives you an idea of just how much growth there is still uh, available in his game, but that he's already, he's a safe prospect. Like, he's going to play in the NHL. I mean, it's a guarantee as far as I'm concerned. His floor is extremely high it's just how high up in the lineup will he go like if doc ends up being a center if he gets his face offs better is uh, captain gonna beat him out for a top two center spot probably not um and then he'll have to fight with owen beck for the third line center spot for me as far as i'm concerned they're both I think they can both be exceptional third line centers on a on a contender. Mm -hmm. So you got two of them, right? M maybe one of them ends up on the wing, uh, but they're both just so good both ways as centers. If you're if you go down down the middle, you've got Suzuki, Doc, Beck, and Kapanen. I just hello. <laughs> I just yeah. think that that's just a recipe for you know. Uh, being a contender down the road you, you fill in the spots on the wing that a couple spots that you still need in the top nine uh maybe get another you know i don't know if luke tuck uh, develops into a bottom six winger but he might be the consummate the type of guy you're looking for with That's the size and, and physical play speed mm -hmm. that he has so there aren't that many missing spots i don't think going to in the future if joshua Wah keeps improving they pick up another guy they draft a kid uh a, another forward in the top 10 this year there's a lot of really nice pieces going forward and uh i think oliver kapman is going to be one of them so um interesting uh hockey prospects or no hockey uh elite prospects that's it hmm. uh put out a rumor yesterday that he's going to head to team team Ra next year. Um, and I think that that's people putting uh, reading tea leaves with the fact that his father is a GM in team Ra. Hmm. So he must want to go, but, but I don't, I'd be surprised. I think he's coming to Laval before the end of this year. I do too. Would yeah. be my guess. As soon as this season's over, I think he's going to be in Laval and be over here for, the rest of his career the Kapanins are a hockey playing family you know 
they played in the NHL. The his uh, his first cousins are playing in the NHL. They don't stay. You know, they they come over to play in the NHL. Um, That's it. Sammy Kapanen, obviously his uncle, played a long time in the NHL. So I don't see his dad wanting it to, you know, well, you'll help our team come and play for our team. He's going to want what's best for Oliver. And as far as I'm concerned, going to Laval at the end of this year and then playing next year, Laval or Montreal is the uh, is the route for him to go. So mm-hmm. I, if it, if I were to guess, I would say that he's not going to play at Timra next year, that that's just a rumor based on the fact that his dad is the GM there and not, and not much else. Yeah, no, I I think he'll he'll be in in Laval, like you said, as soon as this year, probably. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, he's ready, right? You, you can see it in the clips; he's ready for that next step to play pro uh, in North America. So, yeah, exciting yeah. stuff again. And another another underrated prospect, it seems. You know, a lot of a lot of Habs prospects are, are put under microscopes, right? The the higher picks and all that, but this guy is he should be getting just as much as attention. Uh, I think. He's got great, great upside. So it's 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 very, very exciting. Now, uh, in the beginning of the show, I did say we weren't really going to talk about it. But come on, we, we have to mention him a little bit. David Reinbacher has made the transition to North America about damn time. And I know that people want to hear you, Grant. Uh, what do you expect from the rest of this season, right? Forget the next season, but the few games that the Rocket has left. What 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 would you, what role would you like him to play? What would you like him to to do there? Well, you know, it was nice of you to wait till after Rocco was gone because uh, the Sens have so few prospects coming up; it would just make him feel <laughs> bad, right? So, Ooh, that, dig dig. <laughs> that was very yeah. kind of you to think of waiting till Rocco uh, signed very off. You know? you know, very considerate. Yeah. Guy. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know. Reinbacher's one of Grant's growers, you know, he, uh, oh. <laughs> no, um, you know, it was neat there. He got in the team picture for Laval. Did you see that? That's true. Right on time. Yeah. But right the big on R time. on his, uh, just like recruits, the big R on the, you know, stands for Reinbacher maybe. Eh? The, there the, we the, go. You can think that it's got the big R on his sweater now. It's no, um, yet. <laughs> I think he'll, uh, geez. I mean, when's the last time Montreal had a, uh, had a, uh, you know, on the AHL team, they had a right side with uh, three first round picks on it. Never, first of all, but no nope. Reinbach Barron's going to be third line, uh, third pairing defenseman. Yeah, that's and crazy. He's a first round pick. Yeah. You know, may you, Reinbacher, Barron on your right side in Laval. Scary. Scary. Uh, it's just so, prom- you know, there's just so much promise there, right? Then we might see Engstrom and Hudson yet too oh join Laval, you know, <laughs> before the end of the year. Maybe. Wow. Mayshar, uh, yeah, you know, Struble's going to come back down. Yeah. Struble will come back down. Maybe Roy or Yelonen. I, wow. I like that somebody mentioned it, and I, I think that makes sense that maybe you, uh, I mean, you'd lose them, you might lose them on waivers, but I don't think at this point that's the end of the world if Yelonen gets picked up by another team. Because I don't know that he has a future in Montreal, but he could sure help Laval. And oh, yeah, definitely, was playing better. Maybe, maybe instead of, uh, but you know what? He wouldn't have been. He, was he papered? That's the thing. What? Like I don't. Yelonen. Yeah. No, not the only ones who were were Joshua Roy and Jin Struble. Right. Mm-hmm. So Yelonen couldn't even. I don't think be so. Be eligible for the playoffs, I don't think, if oh. they send him back down because they didn't – he wasn't papered. Uh, yeah, that that could be – I know somebody had mentioned it. I thought it was a good idea, but the more I think about it, I don't think he would be eligible for the playoffs. I mean, they could send him back down to help him get into the playoffs, and that's a possibility, you know. And then uh, when the season ends or there's still two games Laval left, then send Roy back down for the last two games in the playoffs. So maybe, maybe they go that route. Um, now, uh, but yeah, I don't see, I could see Struble getting sent down too. 
and wow, that you know, yeah, it's a young defense core, but boy, oh boy, so much talent. Yeah, just yeah, so I, it would be just great if uh, if all those guys were were in Laval. Um, yeah, I think Ryan Bacher, it there might, there'll be an adjustment period for him. The mm-hmm. the small ice, uh, the physical game in in the AHL. Uh, you know, uh, things will be happening pretty quickly for him, but he's pretty poised and, and, and strong and a good skater. Like the physical, uh, elements are there for him to step in and, and be effective. I think he's got, so Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think he'll, uh, he'll look good. Um, be interesting to see if he gets any power play time or stuff like that. They may, they may ease him into that mm. and the PK as well. I don't see them, you know, I mean, they've got Mayu right as the stud on the right side for them. Yeah. So they may ease him in a bit and play him 15 to 20 minutes and not, you know, 23 plus right away. But I expect them to, to look decent and to help the team uh, get in the playoffs it's it this weekend it, it the timing is great cuz they go to three game road trip three nights in a row uh and two against Belleville and one against Toronto the teams that they have to beat out for that last it's spot be fun so, games yeah pivotal games and and i mean what better atmosphere for uh to go from Cloton that you know was out of the playoffs basically since january Stinker. To the middle of a, uh, a heated playoff race, I think it's yeah. kind of cool that the first three games too for him will be on the road, mm-hmm. and then he'll be a little bit adjusted, adapted for the uh, the week the next weekend when Belleville comes to uh, Laval and uh, you know back to back games. And yep. I'm going to try to get out to that. Me we're too. We we're seeing if we can't get something arranged so that I can get out and uh, maybe do a, hopefully do a podcast with Tony. Um, yeah. And maybe we can do, you know, maybe we can do a recruits draft cast uh, uh, that weekend as well. But I'm going to see if I can't get out to, uh, to see his uh, debut. And are you going on the Friday night? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, Good. I hope I uh, hope you can make it out, and I hope I can. And uh, see you there, my friend. That'd be something. That'd be something. I'm I'm excited. I know Hab Sands are excited. This I'm sure David's excited. Right, getting out of that terrible situation over there, just just getting on a, a winning team, right, a team that's actually competitive, makes a ton of difference, right? Because I remember when I played, I played at a, a you know small level, right, but whenever I was on losing teams, I didn't want to go to practice. I didn't want to go to games. It wasn't fun anymore, right? But when you're competitive, when you know you got a shot, you got a good team, it's like, okay, like I actually have the the love for hockey is back, right? I want to go to the arena. I want to play hard. Uh, I think this can do just wonders for his development uh, and for the team as well, because let's not forget he is one hell of a player. So uh, very, very excited to see David play for Laval as soon as this weekend, hopefully. So uh, I think a lot of Habs fans are going to be tuning in for that. I don't even know if it's broadcast since it's it's, uh, it's it's away games, but whatever. We're gonna keep an eye on that right. for sure. <laughs> I'm sure RDS or whoever will, uh, because of this top five pick in Laval. I remember that they made special broadcasts when KK and Caulfield came down. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would think at least one of the games will be uh, uh, on one of the French sports networks. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. That's about going to do it for us this week. Um, don't forget, right, April 25th, the U18 tournament starts, and we're going to be covering it. We're going to be talking all about that stuff. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait for that. Uh, let us know in the comments how you think David Reinbacker will fare in Laval, what your expectations are for that for him. We'd love to know. And as always, go check out recruits.ca for all of your Habs and draft coverage. There's, uh, you know, scout testimonials. There's player profiles on there. Everything you need to know, you will find on recruits.ca. Grant, any parting remarks from you? Grant Scrower? No, we want to keep it under uh, 60 minutes here, and it's close. So, (laughs) Well, thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, we'll see you next (laughs) week. Take care. 
And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.